From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. And there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us tonight on News Channel 5 Plus. And I think we have an interesting hour ahead for you. It is obviously the middle of the summer. It certainly feels like it outside with yet another 90 degree heat day out there. But a lot of people are ramping up preparations for a fall sports season, whether that be student athletes, whether it be coaches, whether it be parents watching their kids getting out there and doing camps in the middle of the summer or hitting the weight room or just doing individual workouts at this point in time. Obviously, you've got people who facilitate those camps. A lot of things going on right now as you try to gear up for the start of August and football practice or volleyball or soccer, whatever it gets to, and obviously other sports throughout the course of the year. And over the course of the next hour, we're going to talk about some of the things that you need to know about prepping for that and avoiding injury and being safe and being productive as you try to do that. We're also going to talk about some opportunities coming up for you and, and some resources that might be useful for you as you start to compete or as your child starts to compete over the course of the next school year. And we're thrilled to be joined tonight by Dr. Alex Diamond, who is it's a really long list here to get into it. <laughs> associate Professor of Orthopedic Surgery and Associate Professor of Pediatrics over at Vanderbilt. Also the Vanderbilt Youth Sports Health Center Director at the Monroe Carroll Junior Children's Hospital. Alex, welcome in. Thanks Thank for being you. here tonight. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And let's start with an opportunity for people coming up this Friday. July 15th at Geotis Park. You guys are going to have the Youth Sports Health and safety conference yeah. at the new soccer stadium yeah. for people who've never been or don't know what this is about what is it about yeah i, I think for, for me when we talk about youth sports or school age sports um, is that it, it is really a vehicle for for child development um, and not only from a uh, and child development and health and not only from a physical standpoint but uh, mentally and, and socially emotionally and so really the conference is is geared towards addressing all of those things and and it's an opportunity for all of us as stakeholders uh, to participate and so when we look at youth sports health and safety and wellness and all those positive factors we talk about is it doesn't just happen and so uh, we need to create an environment that's safe and healthy and, and positive for our for our athletes to do that uh, and to be able to achieve those goals and so the, the goal of the conference is really to bring together not only healthcare providers, doctors, athletic trainers, physical therapists, nurses, EMS personnel, but the people in the trenches uh, every day, your, your coaches, your athletic directors, your athletic administrators, parents, um, all those who, who have a, a keen interest in, in the health and wellness and, and safety. If you're involved in the, the care, the coaching, the, the lives of, of kids and teens, we feel like this is a place for, for you to come and, uh, and gain knowledge and all those different areas and aspects of, of sport wellness and safety. You've served in a lot of different roles around sports, obviously at the center, you're a team physician with the Predators and Vanderbilt, serve overseeing trainers, I'm sure, at a lot of different high schools in the area as well. You talk about Friday being for everyone. Yeah. What what will the day look like when they show up? What are they going to learn if they go to Geodis Park on sure. Friday? Yeah, so first off, you'll get to see an unbelievable, beautiful stadium. It's um, awesome. So if you haven't been there yet, please just come for that. It's, a, it's an amazing place. Um, so you'll get a chance to see the stadium, uh, have some nice breakfast, have some nice lunch with us. Uh, and I say that jokingly, but I think that's an opportunity to network. Um, you know, get to meet others uh, like you, like-minded, who, who care about sports and, and, and the wellness and safety of sport. Um, but we're really going to cover a lot of topics that day. It's a full day. It's a jam-packed day. Um, but we hope to give you as much education as, as possible. Um, certainly, we'll, we'll cover a lot of the big ones, like concussion is always a hot-button topic. We'll talk about sudden cardiac arrest and emergency action planning. Uh, but we'll also talk about some of the other things that I think get less uh, attention, um, but are equally, if not, you know, more important. Uh, we'll talk a lot about mental health uh, in, in our young athletes. One of the key things that over the last couple years has been slowly sort of building as a, as a crisis in sport and I think obviously since the last few years I think it's probably reached a tip, tipping point and is a crisis in, in sport at this at this point. And we'll talk about other things like overuse and sport specialization and one thing I know we'll talk, touch on later but our Safe Stars initiative here in Tennessee and we'll, we'll talk a fair amount about uh, that as well. 
Registration starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. As you mentioned, breakfast is provided there, and then the program really gets underway at 8 o'clock. You mentioned uh, there'll be health care providers. Uh, I'm sure a lot of team trainers, doctors, people like that. If you're a parent out there, is this an event for you? Yeah, uh, absolutely. This is not one of those things where you're going to sit there and sort of say, I have no idea what, what they're talking about this over my head. The, the speakers that we have are, are nationally known speakers from across the country and, and several uh, from Vanderbilt as well. Um, but they're used to sitting down and, and talking with parents and, and families and, um, you know, we're all in this together. And so uh, it, it is one of those things that absolutely as a parent don't feel like this is a medical conference and you'll be out of place. This is a, absolutely a time for you to be there, ask questions. Um, you know, a lot of the, the key things that we end up thinking about, we, we sit and think about sometimes in vacuums and, and forget what it's sometimes like to, to be in the trenches. And so we, we want to have your questions and your opinions and, and hear what uh, is on your mind and, and what's uh, affecting you. We know that uh, from surveys that we've done that um, parents still overwhelmingly believe that sports are good for their kids. They know all the lessons and the, the health benefits that come from it. Uh, but the two things that always come up that uh, uh, bother them the most or concern them the most is either injury or the fear of injury. And the second is um, the uh, quality of coaching and, and not so much from the X and O standpoint, but from a, from a heart and a, and a leadership perspective. And so those are two of the things that, again, I, I think we're gonna try to really focus on at and, this talk. And for everybody thinking about possibly coming out on Friday morning, as we mentioned, registration starts at 7 a.m. Is it as simple as just showing up there and what's the cost associated with the day? Yeah, so it's a uh, sort of tiered, tiered cost. So as a a physician or athletic trainer uh, who needs some of this stuff for their continuing education credits there's a little bit more of a cost uh, but for uh, parents coaches and teachers it's a it's a much lower lower cost everything's on our website if you have Vanderbilt Youth Sports Health and Safety Conference uh, you can register there you can certainly register in person as well we'll have the ability to to do that if you're uh, decide at the last minute we'd still love to have you just walk on up um, and, and register and, and be a part of it it sounds like it'll be a very interesting day if you have an interest in athletics at any level and sort of the bioscience and health mechanisms behind it and certainly everybody wants their child to be safe and we go back to that parent topic I mean I think all parents as you mentioned a lot of them are excited about their kids to be in sports think there's a huge benefit there you mentioned some of the concerns but I think all parents also have this sort of just hope that when they hand their kids off to a coach or to an athletic training staff or whatever it may be at whatever level they're at that they're going to be in the best possible care yeah. so uh, how much does a day like Friday go into that and making sure that that is exactly what is going to happen when they do that? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a huge part of it, um, and it's one day, and so we're certainly not going to learn all of it, but I mentioned the Safe Stars initiative, uh, and we'll have an entire session and panel at the end of the day on Safe Stars, and if you're not familiar with Safe Stars, what it is is it's the first youth sports health safety rating system in the entire country. It is developed with the Vanderbilt Youth Sports Health Center in partnership with the Tennessee Department of Health, and over 40 community partners actually uh, supported this program and helped us develop it. But what it does is it is creates three tiered levels of safety, bronze, silver, and gold. Uh, the more levels uh, of safety and criteria that you meet, the higher level you, you get. And uh, so if you are a youth sports organization, if you're a school sports organization and you want to be part of Safe Stars, come to the conference on Friday. You'll learn all about it. Uh, we're actually offering uh, as part of it a uh, free AED, uh, if you're not familiar with that, an automated external defibrillator to um, any group, uh, the first 40 groups that sign up um, within, our, within this conference and commit to doing a uh, Safe Stars application, uh, we're going to give you an AED uh, as, as well uh, to help uh, improve the safety of your sport. Uh, but that's a program that we're really, really proud of. As I mentioned, it's the first one in the country. Uh, and it's not just about, again, it's a rating system, but it's not just about rating. Um, what we want to do is be able to, for, for every criteria that we're asking folks to meet, we actually provide free resources on how to do that. If you go on the Safe Stars website through the Tennessee Department of Health, it lists the criteria, bronze, silver, and gold, and then it tells you exactly how you can meet that. Every single part of that application, every single part of that resource is free. And so what we want to do is raise all the standards across the entire state for meeting that, and that's where you really start seeing those differences. You were the founder of it, so you certainly should be proud. First in the country of this kind uh, unpack it a little bit more for 
the layman, no pun intended there, <laughs> but what does it mean if you're gold certified yeah. versus silver versus bronze versus not certified at all? Oh, yeah. The, the, one, the one thing I will sort of chip in is that this is an entirely voluntary program. Uh, it started off that way for both schools and youth sports organizations. Just this past legislative session, um, the Safe Stars Bat Act was actually passed, so now it will be mandatory for every school that sponsors athletic programs uh, to meet the bronze criteria, and that will go into effect this coming coming school year. So Th that's high school, junior high, anything. That's correct. Wow. Yeah, and so that will be mandatory uh, starting this school school season. So hopefully you'll see some changes there, but it's. Uh, we still encourage schools to go above and beyond, go to that, uh, that uh, silver and gold level. For a youth sports organization, it's still voluntary, but follow the lead of our schools who are doing the right things um, and, and become a member of this program as well. The bronze criteria is what we feel like is the bare minimum that any uh, school or any um, sporting event should have. You mentioned, how do I know when I drop my kid off that they're doing the right thing? This is a way to know. So as a parent, when you're thinking about a youth league or a school sponsored sport, where are they? Are they a bronze? Are they silver or gold? Or are they nothing? That will give you a glimpse into the, you know, the amount of effort and, and care that they've taken into the, the safety and well-being. Uh, sort of that old analogy, does when you drop your kid off at the pool, there's a lifeguard. Is there a lifeguard when it comes to school sports and this is, or to sports in general? Does this give that um, that backup. The main things that we have in the bronze level are anything that's already state law, as well as anything that's responsible for most death and disability in sport, and that includes uh, heart issues, sudden cardiac arrest, concussion, head and neck issues, um, heat-related uh, injury and illness, um, and then um, there's some additional things on there like background checks, safeguarding, um, having coaches trained in uh, CPR and AED uh, use. Can you go through some of the things that help safeguard against those? Uh, the, the, those are sort of the symptoms that you're trying to prevent. Yeah. How do you do that? Because I, I find sometimes with things like this, we take for granted from the outside, if you're not in mm. it, what is definitely there. And it sounds like in, in some cases it hasn't been there in the past and hopefully this new law this year means it's going to be there now. Yeah. So a lot of it is, um, is just pure policy. Uh, a, a lot of the uh, issues that, that we see is, um, uh, is low-hanging fruit. And so uh, about 9% of all high school uh, aged related sport uh, injury um, is related to even just violation of the rules of the game. So just simply enforcing the rules of the sport, um, not only during games, but in practice, can eliminate injury uh, and uh, prevent illness. And so um, a lot of it is uh, not complicated. Um, it takes time, it takes effort, um, but they are uh, some simple things that can be done with just straightforward policy changes, uh, making everyone aware of what the symptoms of a concussion are and how to recognize it and respond to it. Same thing with someone who may be experiencing or at risk for sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, and there are lots of things that we know we can't, pre we can't predict. We can't prevent everything. Sport is not a zero risk uh, endeavor. But a lot of it also has to do with being prepared. So having an emergency action plan. Who's going to be in charge of getting the equipment? Who's going to be in charge of calling 911? Who's going to start particular life-saving measures? Who's going to make sure that equipment's there? Who's going to make sure that the gate is open so when you do call the ambulance, it can actually get through? And so um, uh, sort of just going through those steps can make a huge difference. When you talk about the cardiac part or the heat illness part, those sort of things, is that having an AED buy? Yeah. Is that having mandated water breaks is that part of the criteria yeah, absolutely absolutely so uh, again part of it is being prepared um, having um, uh, dunk tanks to cool people off having ice to cool people off knowing what the best time of day or night to practice um, what ac what uh, accommodations do you do you uh, require uh, based on the heat and humidity prediction of that of that day um, so yeah it's it's all of those things the show hopefully is for physicians and trainers and those people out there who may be interested about Friday or just want to kind of continue the dialogue as watching this program. But specifically, my interest is for a lot of you parents out there who have kids in sports, 
have kids who want to be in sports and you want to make sure that they have the best possible training and are under the best possible health protocols and know what to look for as they get set to start that training or go back to school this fall. And our phone lines are open tonight, 737-7767, if you'd like to join in on the conversation or if you have a question here for Alex Diamond. And we'll take our first break. When we come back, I'll ask a couple more questions from a parent's perspective. We'll get into some other things, a lot more about the STARS initiative and some other things as we move along here tonight on Sports Live here on News Channel 5 Plus.